Sometimes meeting Mr. or Mrs. Wright is as simple as having something go wrong. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down the top 10 TV meet cutes. Look at his face. For this list, we're looking at TV couples who meet in an adorable, funny, or offbeat way, and we're only considering meetings that eventually develop into a relationship. It can be a textbook example of a meet cute, or a reinterpretation of the popular trope. What's your name? Egret. We're also stipulating that the meeting has to happen on screen, rather than just being mentioned as a past encounter. One, two, three. Number 10. Snow White and Prince Charming – Once Upon a Time Wherever you are, I will find you! This meeting is a little more violent than your typical meet-cute. Show your face, you coward! Far from falling in love at first sight, Prince Charming and Snow White's first encounter involves Snow ambushing Charming's carriage and robbing him. When Charming manages to chase her down and discovers that she is in fact a woman, she uses his moment of surprise to hit him with a rock. Girl. Woman. Charming is engaged to another woman at the time, and it turns out that the pouch Snow stole contained the ring he was going to give his fiancée. The nag with the bad attitude, that's what this is about? She's my fiancée. At this point, a romantic relationship doesn't seem the most plausible, but we've read the fairy tales, so we know all about their inevitable happy ending. I've loved you since the first moment I saw you. And I'll love you until my last. Number 9. Buffy and Riley – Buffy, the Vampire Slayer Oh, that was bracing. Riley isn't exactly Buffy's type, in that he's actually not a vampire, unlike her other major love interests on the show. In a textbook meet-cute during her first week at college, Buffy accidentally drops a pile of heavy textbooks on a cute guy's head at the bookstore. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Viewers got pretty excited about Buffy dating a normal guy. I'm sorry, I've forgotten my manners and all the concussion. I'm Riley. Willow, and this is my friend Buffy. It's nice to meet you both. But it turns out that Riley wasn't the simple and stoic student we thought he was. In fact, he's a member of The Initiative, a government agency that tracks and captures demons. What kind of girl is going to go out with the guy who's acting all Joe regular by day and then turns all demon hunter by night? Riley ends up being far more complex than he initially seemed, which makes him that much more of a formidable romantic match for our favorite Slayer. Number 8. Jane and Michael – Jane the Virgin In this hilarious flashback scene, we get to see how Jane and Michael first meet on Jane's 21st birthday. In novelas, this is known as an encuentro significativo, or a significant encounter. Jane's party gets out of hand, causing one of her neighbors to make a noise complaint to the police. When Michael arrives to tell them to tone it down, a tipsy Jane assumes her friends have gotten her a stripper as a surprise. In this case, there was one slight miscalculation. You got me a stripper! Michael is ambushed by Jane's friends, all the while protesting that he is in fact a real cop. Jane grabs what she thinks is his fake gun and shoots it skyward, realizing the misunderstanding when a very real bullet goes through her ceiling. Now that's what we call explosive chemistry. Number 7. Jack and Kate – Lost Excuse me! Did you ever use a needle? You always hear that people find love in the most unlikely of places, but meeting that special someone on a mysterious desert island after surviving a plane crash seems very unlikely. Help with what? With this. Look, I do it myself. I'm a doctor, but I just can't reach you. You just sew that up. That's what makes the first interaction between Jack and Kate so memorable. They're both reeling from the terrifying reality of their situation, but manage to find time for a quiet and intimate moment as a tentative Kate helps stitch up a wound for Jack. Any color preference? <laughs> Standard black. Nothing says romance like discussing spinal surgery and drapes. Give her patch a pair of jeans. I, um, I made the drapes in my apartment. That's fantastic. It may have taken them a little while to get together after this moment, but theirs ended up being one of the most significant relationships in the show's run. Come on, Jack. We have to go back, Kate. 
Number six, Eric and Donna, That 70s Show. Hi, uh, neighbors. Well, hello, we were just coming to welcome you. As far as meet cutes go, this one is pretty darn adorable. <sighs> Remember how we first met? <laughs> Oh, is this a sexy story? Flashing back almost a decade to when the foreman's new neighbors moved in and came over to introduce themselves, we get to see the first meeting between the future couple Eric and Donna. Eric, say hello to Donna. Their dynamic as little kids is pretty much exactly what you'd expect from these two, with Eric becoming instantly infatuated with the new girl next door, and eternal tomboy Donna putting him squarely in his place. What are you looking at, string bean? <laughs> this first encounter establishes what is essentially the relationship between these two central characters for the whole run of the show. U.S.-Soviet relations. Number 5, Ted and Tracy, How I Met Your Mother. You see, I didn't know it yet, but my luck was about to change. Robin and the overly smitten Ted may have kicked off the series with their meet cute. Okay, I'm ready. Where is she? But one could argue that all nine seasons of How I Met Your Mother function as one giant meet cute for Ted and Tracy. I saw that beautiful girl on that train platform and that I had the guts to stand up, walk over to her, tap her on the shoulder, open my mouth, and speak. The entire trajectory of the show builds towards this moment in the finale when they finally meet face to face. I took one of your classes. Really? Which mm -hmm. one? Econ 305. Econ 305? I don't teach. Oh, no. It's not so much about the particular interaction, since they're just two people meeting at the train station, but rather the audience's knowledge of the many times they crossed paths and just narrowly missed kicking off this legendary relationship. That wasn't the night I met your mother. Although I think I glimpsed her foot. The series finale may have been divisive amongst fans, but at least we finally found out how Ted met the mother. Funny how sometimes you just... Things. Number four, Diane and Sam. Cheers. For a line for me, I'll uh, buy you your first drink. Oh, I'd like a bottle of your best champagne. It wasn't that great a lie. In the pilot episode of the classic sitcom Cheers, college student Diane happens upon a bar while on the way to the airport with her fiance. Sumner, now we have a plane to catch. Diane, if we're going to be married, I insist you have my grandmother's antique gold wedding ring. By choosing to answer the bar's phone when it rings, Diane unintentionally involves herself with the bartender, Sam Malone. His attempts to mime out excuses as she talks to his scorned former lover over the phone is the start of their quirky connection. No, she knows you're here. I told her you're here. When Diane realizes that her intended has abandoned her, she finds herself desperate and penniless. Could you not discuss my private life with everyone that comes in? What would you like me to tell him? I don't care. She's a hooker. Thankfully, Sam offers her a job. It may have taken a whole season for these two to give in to their sexual tension, but their combative dynamic ended up being a cornerstone of the show's success. Okay, we went out for Chinese, told each other you know what, and then we went back to my place and tore one off. Number three, Rory and Dean, Gilmore Girls. Hey, what are you doing now? Nothing, much. I should throw this away at some point. If we're to believe what happens on TV, at least 50% of teenage couples meet when one party drops their books and the other helps pick them up. We forgive Gilmore Girls for the cliché in the pilot episode of the show because Rory's extreme awkwardness is what sets this moment apart. God! You're like Ruth Gordon, just standing there with the tannis root. Make a noise. Rosemary's baby. She clearly doesn't have a lot of experience talking to cute guys, especially not ones who can understand her obscure pop culture quips. I mean, I know it's kind of cliche to pick Moby Dick as your first Melville, but... This meeting puts a snag in Rory's plans to transfer to Chilton, since she now knows what Star's Hollow High has to offer. The timing is just really bad. The timing is bad? No stranger to the meet-cute, Rory has a similar, slightly meta encounter with Logan later in the series. Well, this would definitely qualify as a cute meet if we hadn't already met. Number 2, Elena and Damon. The Vampire Diaries. You want what everybody wants. What? 
mysterious stranger who has all the answers. In a season 3 flashback, Delena Shippers got to see the first meeting between vampire Damon Salvatore and seemingly normal teen Elena Gilbert. I want you to get everything you're looking for. But right now, I want you to forget that this happened. Can't have people knowing I'm in town yet. It's a regular night in Mystic Falls when Elena is walking alone in the dark and is approached by a mysterious stranger who mistakes her for someone named Catherine. Catherine. Um, no, I... I'm Elena. It's an awkward start, but Damon recognizes his mistake and manages to salvage the introductions. I'm sorry. You just really remind me of someone. Turns out this Catherine person is Damon's ex, and the exact reason he's come to town. Elena is unaware of the fact that she is the doppelganger of this long-dead vampire and therefore looks exactly like her. The two future lovers have an intense conversation about passionate love, and the rest is history. You want passion, and adventure, and even a little danger. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hey, can I bomb a cigarette? I'm Patty. Patty Spivet. Hey. I'm really excited to meet you. I'm a huge fan. Excuse me? Your forensic reports. I, I read uh, them sometimes. All right. Dr. Mindy Lahiri. Mm-hmm. Cute card. Thank you. Cuter doctor. Whoa. What is happening here? I'm Drew. Sorry, I smell like frosting. I just love to bake. Where did you go, little kitty, kitty, kitty? Kitty, kitty, kitty. kitty. Kitty, 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 Number one, Carrie and Big, Sex in the City. I left feeling powerful, potent, and incredibly alive. I felt like I owned the city. Nothing and no one could get in my way. The ladies of Sex in the City are no strangers to meet cutes. Charlotte leaves one train wreck of a date, only to meet her Prince Charming in a near car wreck when she trips directly in front of his taxi. I'm Trey. Charlotte. It's a memorable way to kick off a relationship, but our narrator Carrie takes home the prize with a slightly more embarrassing blunder. She inadvertently upends the contents of her purse onto the sidewalk, including a supply of Trojans, only to discover that someone tall, dark, and handsome is there to help. Number one, there you go. he's very handsome. Number two, he's not wearing a wedding ring. Number three, he knows I carry a personal supply of ultra texture Thanks. Trojans with a reservoir tip. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's the start of a truly messy relationship, but in the end, she's grateful to the guy who knocked into her that day for the accidental introduction. <laughs> do you agree with our list? What do you think is the best TV me cute? You don't want it? I don't know what I want. For more adorable top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Yeah, I guess so. I really don't have anything important to. Let's go.